This is Dr. Christopher Sendi with Nova Health Recovery Ketamine Infusion Center. I'm going to discuss the very basic science behind ketamine, the glutamate system in particular. Now, ketamine is a rapid acting antidepressant agent, and it works unlike any other antidepressant available currently. It works primarily through the glutamate system. The glutamate is the most common neurotransmitter in the brain. It composes about 60% of the total neurotransmitter load of the brain. And most people think of serotonin and dopamine as being the major molecules of, of antidepressant effect and motivational effect. But the reality is that glutamate sculpts the tone of these two lizard brain molecules. Now, glutamate is a non-essential amino acid in that we can produce it from another, a number of other sources, uh, including amino acids such as proline and histidine and arginine. But uh, the other interesting fact about glutamate is that it produces GABA, which is a counterbalancing amino acid that basically inhibits the cortex. It relaxes the cortex, whereas glutamate is involved with excitatory transmission. It actually is involved with learning processes and pain as well. Now, glutamate is present throughout the body, and there's brain glutamate, which is formed within the brain. And and involved with neurotransmission there, but there's also glutamate present in the gut microbiome, as well as dietary intake of glutamate. And there's a balance between all these different areas, and glutamate homeostasis is really critical. In fact, dysregulation of glutamate balance results in depression. In fact, gut microbiome dysbiosis produces irregularities in glutamate balance, and this can result in depression as well. So there's a cross-connectivity between what happens in the brain and what happens in your gut. Now we know that the substrates of glutamate effects are pretty pronounced and glutamate is involved ultimately with the regulation and production of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is like fertilizer for your brain. It's what produces new synapses in the brain, as well as postsynaptic density protein, which is PSD95, involved with produ producing proteins involved with dendrite formation, which is where new neurons meet with other neurons as synapses. And of course, mTOR, which is a mammalian target of rapamycin, which is a protein producing uh, uh, pathway inside the neurons themselves. And so glutamate is involved with the regulation of all of these pathways inside the neurons. We know that the glutamate system of, impacts a number of different areas in the brain. And we have on the right side of the brain kind of a brief description of serotonin and dopamine and norepinephrine, which people have come to recognize as possibly the sources of depression and, and other mood disorders. Um, but it's been found that glutamate is actually the pathway that's most critical in terms of it controlling monoamines. In other words, uh, glutamate and its functioning actually sculpts the tone of serotonin, otherwise known as the molecule of happiness and dopamine otherwise known as the molecule of reward and motivation. So glutamate is actually the more important controlling neurotransmitter in our brain. And the glutamate synapse is a cortical type synapse, which is only mammals have cortexes. And there's of interest is that basically we have a neuron, a presynaptic neuron where the original origin of our electrical uh, impulse comes from and it ultimately causes the release of glutamate into a synapse, which is a space between the presynaptic neuron and a postsynaptic neuron. And as the glutamate comes out, it basically binds with AMPA receptors, causing some stuff to happen in the postsynaptic neuron, which we won't get into at the moment. Now, the astrocyte is a non-neuron type cell that's actually involved with forming this entire synapse, and it actually takes up glutamate and it actually takes the glutamate and transmits it right back to that presynaptic neuron. So there's like this cycle going on. And in order for the brain to work properly, all three of these structures need to work in concert and together. And dysregulation in this system can result in neuronal death and ultimately depression. So stress and basically uh, uh, changes in glutamate regulation can result in loss of dendritic spines. Dend dendritic spines are these spiny little knobs that we see present on neurons. And as stress happens, for whatever the reason is, whether it's medical conditions or emotional stress, genetics, 
uh, or other types of problems, we end up getting a loss of dendritic spines. And with this loss of dendritic spines, we find that synapses fall apart, that they start to break down. And then ultimately the neural networks that are involved with allowing our brain to regulate itself start to fall apart. Now, ketamine therapy is unique in that it produces a glutamate burst that then results in brain-derived neurotrophic factor release and ultimately synapse formation. So ketamine, seen up here on the left, basically blocks this NMDA receptor on this GABA interneuron. And it's a little bit complex here, but what it does is this GABA interneuron is turning off this synapse right here, this glutamate-based synapse. And whenever you turn off this inner neuron, it allows this glutamate-based synapse to fire away, releasing a brief glutamate burst, which then causes depolarization in the neuron that follows the postsynaptic neuron. And this results in brain-derived neurotrophic factor production and release, which ultimately allows the formation of new dendritic spines on the neurons. So you can see the increasing numbers of these dendritic spines. And so this is a neuron uh, terminal, and you can see the formation of these dendritic spines right here. And these dendritic spines then meet with other terminals of, of axons to create new synapses, which you see right here, to keep this entire synapse and, and the entire neural network completely functional. Now, ketamine comes in a number of different formulations, but the most rapid and most effective formulation of ketamine for depression and mood disorders is intravenous. And intravenous uh, ketamine uh, performed over a series of six to eight infusions over two to three weeks can produce remission or significant improvement in as many as 70% of treatment-resistant depression patients. And, and ketamine is extremely safe. It uh, is given as 40-minute to 45-minute infusions two to three times per week in uh, a controlled setting, but generally a relaxed uh, environment. And there's a number of different formulations available as well for maintenance therapies, as well as for those that uh, just don't like the idea of getting an IV or as well as cost. And we have the availability of ketamine as both a ketamine dot, ketamine trochees, ketamine tablets, and a ketamine nasal spray as well. And we discuss a lot of these different formulations in some of our other videos. But uh, again, there's just a number of options out there for rapid relief of depression and other mood disorders with the use of ketamine, which is one of the only agents available to modulate the glutamate system, which is the primary system and source of depression, which is why ketamine works better and faster than any other antidepressant available out there.